What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to continue with the forest slash jungle style aquascape. Just a little recap of what we've been doing so far. I first created this hardscape I think almost 10 weeks ago now. 10 weeks ago now. So I spent about two weeks creating this hardscape. I think it was the longest that I've spent on creating a hardscape. So yeah, two weeks, every night or so, I would work on it for an hour until I was happy with the end result. Then after the hardscape was done, we did a moss dry start. So I used three different types of moss, Ricardia moss, Fissidens moss and Boos moss. I blended them up with a stick blender until we had a moss paste and we applied that all along the entire hardscape. Then I covered it with plastic film, I kept it very moist for about 3-4 weeks and that was that finished basically like a week ago and then we filled it up with water. I did not have the best results with this moss dry start just because I was away for holidays and I yeah, ideally you would have to spray it every day a little bit just to keep it extra extra moist but now that the tank is filled up with water um, and every day that goes by i see more and more moss appearing so i did it did work it just needed more moisture but let me get behind the camera and show you guys a close-up of how it's doing right now so this is the current situation now from a distance you might not be able to see any moss but once you get closer you see all these green yeah these green dots of, of moss and even though they're very small right now, like within a few weeks, they should grow into full patches of, of healthy moss. At least that's the plan. So one thing that has developed over the past few days is this white fungus on the, on the wood. Uh, this is completely normal. This always happens when you buy new wood from the store. The first time you submerge it underwater, it just grows some, some white fungus. It's, it's totally normal, uh, nothing to worry about. The only thing that can happen sometimes is, is some sensitive plants. If they get covered with this fungus, they, they might start melting. So I want to add some, some Boosa Philandra to this scape as well. So I might wait with that a little bit until the fungus has, has disappeared. Uh, within, within two weeks or so, we can start adding our, our cleanup crew. So some shrimp and some autosynclus maybe. And they will eat that fungus and they will love to eat it. So. Uh, by then it should be gone and then we can add our sensitive plants as well. So today we're just going to add some um, yeah, some robust plants, some stems in the background, maybe some anubias as well. So with this style of aquascaping, it's, it's all about that optical illusion and, and that sense of depth, you know, trying to make the whole thing look bigger than it actually is. So it's really important that we choose the right plants for this kind of layout. Uh, we can't use plants that have very big leaves or very thick stems. We need to use plants with small leaves, fine textures. Um, so for the background, I chose three different types of plants. Uh, the first one is Muriophyllum Guiana, which is a nice stem plant with really yeah, fine textures, leaves. And I've also chosen Mayaca Fluvitilis. Probably pronouncing that wrong, but never used this plant before. It's very similar to the Myriophyllum guiana, but it's a bit smaller, I think. So the Myriophyllum will go more towards the front and the Mayanka will go more towards the back and hopefully that will increase that optical illusion, that sense of depth. And then there's one more plant, which is the uh, Water Sprite. And I've actually haven't used Water Sprite for many, many years. I never used it in an aquascape. So I'm very curious if it will work in this, in this aquarium or not. And it's a very fast growing plant, so we have to stay on top of trimming. So those are the background plants and I also want to add a lot of epiphyte plants in terms of very small bush of and very small nubias but I'm not going to plant them right now I'll probably plant them within a week or two weeks uh, just when the aquarium is a little bit more established and there's no more ammonia leaking from the substrate in the past I had a lot of bush of melt in a very new setup uh, especially the ones that are from the in vitro cup yeah I guess they're just very sensitive to ammonia or just unstable water parameters so you guys are going to see that in a few minutes probably but just remember that there has been yeah some maybe one or two weeks has passed since i've added the epiphytes i 
All right, guys, that's the planting done, at least for today. I'll see you in a week from now when we continue with the rest of the epiphytes. Okay, fast forward two weeks. It's actually taking a little bit longer than expected, but this tank has given me a little bit of a headache. Uh, we had a lot of issues with cloudy water, and there was a lot of mold on the wood, and we also had a very stinky smell. So yeah, this, this wood that I've used in this cape, I never used it before, but it's um, yeah, it's not the easiest wood to work with. A lot of mo a lot of like fungus, white fungus on the wood, very stinky smell and cloudy water as well. So I was not ready to add more plants to this cape. But things are finally starting to look a bit better. So today we're gonna finish this cape and add more plants, mostly epiphyte plants, and I have some uh, some more moss that I would like to add as well. Uh, this is the current situation. As you can see, the water is still a little bit cloudy. Uh, we're gonna do some more water changes today so that should be should be fixed easily uh, and the background plants that we added two weeks ago are doing really really good especially the uh, Myriophyllum guiana has grown nicely already moss growth is also okay it definitely has improved from two weeks uh, yeah you don't really see a lot of moss uh, basically for this moss dry start method I chose three types of very very slow growing moss so it's taking a lot longer than I had initially anticipated. But uh, we're getting there. And today I'm going to add more moss just to uh, speed things up a little bit. So I think it's going to look nice. I'm excited. So I think earlier in the video I showed you guys a clip of the um, in vitro Boussa from Danela. And I've been saving that, that cup for, for, the, for the forest cape. But a week ago I checked it and there was actually a lot of mold on the, on the gel from the tissue cup. So I took all the bush of Lander out and placed them in here. And luckily they all haven't been affected by the mold, so they're still doing fine. So those, these we're going to add today. And then I have a lot more bush of Lander in here that I, I might take some from here. I'll just trim it off. And then I've trimmed a lot of bush of Lander from the 10 liter no filter cube. And I've temporarily placed them in my no filter vase. So all the boosts that you see here, we're gonna add those. And I still have a bit of the um, Boussa Valandra moss in here as well. Also recently, I gave this moss in this tank a little trim. Uh, I saved all of that as well, so we can plant it into the forest uh, jungle scape. And then I think we have a nice plant collection. Okay, so this is everything that I've managed to gather from all my other tanks. So over here we have a large amount of Ricardia moss. It's quite funny, like everything that you see here. This has been grown in a tank with CO2. It's much smaller. And then this patch right here has been growing without CO2. So it's a lot bigger, a lot more yeah, stretched out, sort of. Um, over here I have some Fissilens moss. And this is the very rare and very expensive Boussa Valandra moss. Really beautiful though. And over here we have a, yeah, like a variety of very small Boussa Valandra. No, don't ask me about all the names. No idea. But they're very, uh, I think they will suit this layout very nicely. And then this is the, um, the in vitro Boussa Valandra from Denala. So I think we can now drain the tank and then we can add our plants. So let's go. Okay, so that was not my brightest moment. I was planning to drain the tank and then add all the rest of the plants. But of course we still have our algae cleanup crew in here. So there's some Otosynclus and there's some Amano shrimp and there's some other shrimp in there. So we can't really drain that much water. And of course, when you drain the water, all the background plants start to yeah, suffer, basically. So that's not really a good idea, Mark. Um, so we're going to fill the tank back up and then we continue. All right, so I hope you guys can see properly now. So I would like to, to use as little glue as possible. My plan is to literally just try to wedge everything in between the cracks of all the wood cracks of the hardscape so just like this in between the tweezers 
and then find a nice spot for it inside the aquarium and then keep your fingers crossed hoping that it will stay there and then we're just gonna repeat that with all the other booths so again just find a nice spot or like this here in the front that's perfect we can add some more moss here as well So this one for me is really the star of the show. This is the the Boosvelander mini needle leaf from Danela, and yeah, this is so beautiful. Like it's still a little bit tiny right now. The leaves will actually grow slightly bigger. So I would really like to place these, yeah, where we can where where we can really see them properly. You know, so they really have to have the best spot inside the aquarium. So let's think about that for a second. Mm. Maybe over here in the front there's still a gap. We have four nice clumps. So maybe one clump just right here. Okay, so so far we've already added quite a few boosts of Landra. Next I want to switch to adding some, some moss. Uh, so we'll start with some Ricardia moss since we have the most of that. And I'm just gonna take this big patch and just take it in like rip it apart and into smaller chunks and then we can just wedge that in between the in between the wood okay so we're making good progress i really like this little area here in front lots of things going on there um yeah overall starting to look really good next up is the the rare moss this is the busa valandra moss uh, this is the only patch that I have, so we can't just place one patch inside the aquarium, that just looks a little bit silly. So I'm going to try to take small pieces and just spread it around so it can start growing and then we can, yeah, just have it a little bit everywhere, you know, instead of just one patch in one spot. Okay, so I've decided to actually glue this moss inside the aquarium. So I've just really gently, yeah, turned it apart into smaller patches. Then we'll use a little bit of a gel type super glue to glue these in place. So let's try that. Okay, so I just took a little break and did a little assessment. So basically I think I'm happy with the front part here, like the lower part, but like the higher part, like all those uh, pieces of wood are still very empty, you know, like there is a little bit of moss on there, but we need more, we need more. So I think that's the next step. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to tackle that, but I still have a lot of Ricardia and have a lot of Fissidens left, so we can use that for that. And I think I'm going to drain the water now a little bit and see if we can do something on those stumps. guys that's the forest aquascape finally completed it was this was definitely a labor intensive aquascape i started working on the hardscape in the end of june and we're now in the middle of september so uh, this was definitely a long one but i enjoyed every moment of it definitely learned a lot from this aquascape as well and even though the the moss dry start was not really a great success i would still recommend to you guys to use it and i would definitely still use it myself as well so i'm really happy with the end result and i can't wait to see how this is going to look in a few weeks from now we also still need to decide what kind of fish we should put in here. So the tank itself is only 40 liters and with the hardscape and substrate, I think we probably have like 20, 25 liters left. So I'm thinking maybe some small mosquito rasbor or something like that. Curious to know what you guys will put in here, so let me know in the comments. So I hope you guys enjoyed this series. If you liked it, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done this yet. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Take care.